Hey, this is Ash. I run the Don Caballero fan page, and I wanted to bring you another video from the digitization process. But before that, I wanted to run a few terms by you so you weren't left wondering what it is the hell we were talking about. So when we're talking about tape, we're referring to the actual tapes themselves that we're digitizing, which the whole Don Caballero back catalog was recorded onto 2-inch magnetic tape, 24-track magnetic tape. So when we say tape, that's what we're referring to. When we say a double reel, we're referring to this one particular reel which American Don was recorded on, which is twice as big as a normal tape reel would be. So it means it's twice as heavy, and we talk a little bit about the specifics of actually like running it on the machine and how you have to adjust for the weight and the speed and all that stuff in which it runs. So that's kind of interesting to talk about. Also, we refer to a process called baking a tape. So, for those of you who don't know, and I didn't know this myself before we started uh, this whole journey, but when a tape is old, say, you know, five, 10, 20 years, I mean, the older they get, the, they get something called sticky shed syndrome. And I'm, I'm just gonna read the Wikipedia definition of it, okay? Before, uh, before I elaborate on baking. Sticky shed syndrome is a condition created by the deterioration of the binders in the magnetic tape, which hold the ferric oxide magnetizable coating to its plastic carrier, or which hold the thinner back coating on the outside of the tape. This deterioration renders the tape unusable. Some kinds of binders are known to break over time due to the absorption of moisture. The symptoms of this breakdown can be immediately obvious, even when rewinding the tape, tearing sounds, and sluggish behavior. If a tape with the sticky shed syndrome is played, the reels will make screeching or squeaking sounds, and the tape will leave dusty, rusty particles on the guides and the heads. And now I'll read the definition for baking a tape. Baking is a common practice for temporarily repairing sticky shed syndrome. There is no standard equipment or practice for baking, so each engineer is left to create their own methods and materials. Generally, tapes are baked at lower temperatures for relatively long periods of time, for one to eight hours, or more, as we later find out. Wider tape formats may take longer. It is commonly thought that baking a tape will temporarily remove the moisture that has accumulated in the binder. A treated tape will reportedly function like new for a few weeks to a few months before it reabsorbs the moisture and becomes unplayable again. So basically, baking fixes sticky shed syndrome that happens after years of storage where it can accumulate moisture in the tape itself. That will help you get a, get a more solid pass when you run it through. Otherwise, you could get something where it just it sounds like, uh, you know, kind of slow and sluggish and, and the tape itself might be unusable if it's in really bad shape. Luckily for us, Damon Che was really good about storing his tapes for all these years in just like a, you know, a dry, well-ventilated environment and stuff like that. So that made this project all the much more achievable. So big props to him. The people that are in the video, myself, a fellow named Alexi, he's wearing a, a baseball cap, he's wearing green. And another fellow named Richard, he's a bald guy with glasses. And we're just all hanging around the control room talking shop about you know the band's music and uh, the tapes themselves and some of the processes that you know we're, we're trying to pull off and when I say we I mean those guys those guys are experts at what they do they're very knowledgeable and know know what they're doing so I was very grateful to have their help in all of this it absolutely was the reason that this whole thing was a success so thanks to Alexi and Richard Thanks to all of you for supporting, and enjoy the video. We couldn't even like use this one if we didn't have the correct take-up reel. Hmm. And Albini left it behind. You know how you need two to like... Oh yeah. The deck, so if you don't have one that matches the size, then you're fucked. Oh good, it's already been set. That's nice. So you're setting the speed and stuff right now? Um, so I was just checking because the... The normal um, setting for this machine is for a ten and a half inch reel, and there's a setting if you want to use a bigger reel that will allow the tension to be set for that. It's different, and they weigh a lot more, so there's more stress on the motors and all that. Anyway. 
electric oh, track yeah. sheets. Electrical track sheets. Yeah. Finally. Shit is organized. So this is American Dawn, recorded by Steve Albini. So you're not at all surprised that it's well organized. Organized. Notes. Hmm. On the on the four respect uh, track sheet, there's this uh, on channel 24. There's uh, on the first one, like I read two in a row, and I thought it said 646 as a description of what's on the track. Mm -hmm. And I kept reading. I was like, what kind of mic is that? And, and listening, I was like, well, it's a talkback mic, but I don't know what a 646 is. And Richard looked over and it's like, no, no, it doesn't say 646, it says Gab. <laughs> it's just a Gab mic. <laughs> Alright, let's library wind this thing for the next five hours. Mm -hmm. Big fucker. Yeah, so it's the other helpful thing that Catherine told me over the phone is that Usually you use that function of library winding, which is super slow compared to the regular fast rewind. Mm -hmm. Kind of when you're done, just go library because it's the last one you do before putting the tape away, so it's packed nice and smooth. Mm. And in the case of those old tapes, even now we've already baked them, but she says like to determine whether they're, they've been baked enough, like you set your library's wind like at the smallest possible increment. And then you just like keep your ear to the transport if like anything sounds out of place or you can hear the transport kind of like hurting or not moving at all. You just like jump on the stop button and just chuck it back in the oven. Oh. So she says sometimes on like really old shit she'll end up baking a tape for like close to a week, you know? Really? Yeah, yeah, but that's like, you know, Alan Lomax shit. <laughs> just old. But that's something I didn't know you could tweak the library wind speed. You can make it painfully slow if you want to. You're like slower than play. Yeah. yeah. Like five centimeters per second on a mile long reel. <clears throat> What's that called? Is it like magnetic oxide or magnesium oxide or something like that that sort of settles and hardens onto the tape and that's why you bake it in the in the first place to... Well, my understanding was that you kind of just dehydrate whatever moisture got into the glue that secures the oxide to the actual tape medium and then you kind of reactivate that glue while you're at it. Mm. That's what keeps it from just shedding. Mm. It's a lubrication that's like in there too and I think that the revitalization like helps that, right? Yeah. Mm. Plus we like dunk them in a bath of WD-40 too for good measure. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> And you light it on fire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think that they played any of these like takes together, like live off the floor, like for respect or something like that? Definitely that one. Yeah. For sure, because you can you can hear it that they don't know when the next part's coming, and uh, <laughs> not Ian, the other dude, is like playing the next riff twice, and then everyone catches on the third time around. <laughs> Mike Bamfield. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like you'll see with the Albini stuff, he uh, he'll make like a master reel. So likely what he was doing was working off of like a large reel of tape, and then when they got a tape that they liked, he would splice that onto a separate reel, so that there's just a reel of like finished takes right. and nothing else with leader in between them. I see. So yeah. it's, everything's nicely organized and separated, and then whatever takes they didn't like got recorded over. Yeah. Or thrown in the garbage or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you don't wind up with this situation where there's a reel that's 30 minutes long, but there might only be like five minutes of stuff that you want on it. Right. And there's, annoyingly on this one, there's no notes about anything on this particular reel. Yeah. Some of the other reels from this record have notes and track sheets, so I'm not sure if this one did and it just got lost over the years, or right. maybe they never made them. Are you surprised at how well these tapes have held up? Uh, In just a no. Because mm. theoretically, there's no reason why they shouldn't, but right. just improper storage. anything that's 20, 30 years old is bit of a crapshoot. Totally. Uh, credit to Damon for keeping them in a good condition. Truly. Like, those were all supposed to be technically the biggest pain in the ass to work with as far as like when in time they were manufactured and then used and then potentially poorly stored, you know? On that note, the last one, world class listening problem, he said that even though that's like the newest of them in terms of their release, that, that all the tapes were recorded over from a band. 
So, so they may, in, they may in fact be old and really shitty. Yeah, well, we baked them anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, for the sure. The type of tape that they are isn't known for being a problem mm -hmm. on that record. Like that tape is historically quite easy to work with. Okay. So hopefully that's okay. This one that we're doing right now is kind of the like worst case scenario. It's from an era when this particular tape wasn't super great, hmm. um, and it's been fine. Hmm. So this yeah, was. Big sigh of relief. Yeah, this one was the one that I was most apprehensive about yeah. having problems with, and so far, I mean, we're four out of five of the way through, so uh, fingers crossed that the last one's good too. But what IPS? Are, this is 15. Are they all been That's that? The first one is 15. No shit. Everything else has been 30, mm -hmm. and everything after this is 32, I think. Uh, American so, Dawn is 30, World Class is 30. Hence why this is taking longer than the other ones. Yeah, right? it's just twice as much twice as, yeah. length. You're kind of wondering uh, how much the second engineer that worked with Sutton had to do with it, because like you couldn't find two more different sounding records yeah. than two and what burns, even though it's the same studio and the same producer and the same lineup. Interesting. Like they're insanely different production wise. It's really fun to hear also, like, first record sounds, I mean, it's Albini, and sounds really amazing, and, you know, like you would expect from that whole situation, and then second record, the band sounds like they figured it out, mm. like, the band sounds like, oh, we heard things of, on the first record that maybe we didn't like, and we fixed that, but now the production is a different thing, and then third record now they've like seems like both the sound and the performances are really what they should be mm -hmm. it's really interesting to hear that like progression and without knowing what anyone was thinking if that's actually the thought process or what happened it's i can't say but mm. it's interesting to speculate how that might have happened